confusion that often occurs when people seek to experience the truth has to do with the fact that as much as you as much as you conceptually understand what we're talking about here or you know that that that's part of what you're doing is deepening your understanding of what we're talking about here and i would assume all of you have some degree of understanding about what we're talking about here otherwise i couldn't believe that you could keep coming to this class <laughs> But then, but then, then see, but then the hook's in your mouth in a sense, right? Because then you want to 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 fulfill on the possibility that this is, and the fulfillment of the possibility that this is occurs to you once you get familiar with the the concepts and the understandings and the teachings. Occurs to you to be something that uh, has yet to happen. Yeah, and so, uh, again and again and again, as we meet, uh, I know that you, like most other people who attend meetings like this, um, you're looking to realize, uh, you, you're looking to be, to, to experience this uh, awareness that you are as yourself and have the experience of this awareness that you are as yourself fulfill the possibility that it is in terms of the peace that that can provide and the sense of ease that that can provide and the, and the ability to be responsive uh, in life, regardless of how challenging the whole thing is, and the ability to, you know, to, to really love from your heart, uh, especially with the people that, that you're close to, but not just them, because you, know, you realize that uh, if, if you can experience this possibility that you are, that the part of the freedom that comes along with it is the freedom from conflict, right? The freedom from conflict. So you don't have any enemies. You know, you see, you, you're able to see things in a context in which um, everything is an expression of yourself, in a sense. Everything is an expression of yourself. So how, how could you have conflict, right? Because a non-duality, there's nothing separate from you, right? There, there's nothing separate from you. And, and I think what happens as we get into this, this, this process of, okay, we keep talking about it, we keep looking at it from, from different angles, we keep uh, conceptualizing it in different ways, people talk about it in terms of uh, what the possibility would be like if you were living that possibility, what the fulfillment would be like if you were experiencing the fulfillment. Uh, and, and the reason that this book is, is uh, a little different from a lot of other things is it really cuts, cuts through the chase in terms of, it's really point, it, this book is really pointed at the confusion. It's pointed at where things tend to get dicey or break down when you're in this process of realizing the possibility because one of the things that's a conundrum is that you, we, you keep hearing that you're already there, right? You keep hearing that you're already there and yet while you hear you're already there, you're sitting there saying, well, if I'm already there, then how come I'm not experiencing being already there? If already there means I'm already the self, I'm already the awareness, and the nature of that self and that awareness is freedom, is peace, is fulfillment, right? is satisfaction, is aliveness, is love, then why isn't that what is happening here, you know, if I'm already there, right? And so that really becomes the, that really becomes the, 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 the process, you know, the process of, 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 on the one hand, there is no process because where, what you're attempting to, to realize and experience is already the case. On the other hand, there is a process because all, uh, even though that may be so, that's not the way it's occurring for you. So because it's not the way it's occurring for you, then, then there's a process. But if it's already the case, the process seems to be a waste of time. Do you see the problem? And so you, you, and, and that leaves, and I can see it when we have interactions here, and I hear it, I see it when I listen to other interactions with pe people who are teaching this stuff, 
that the, the, the students and the seekers are saying in their own way in every way that they speak, you know. Well, the, the, the thing that they're always saying, and regardless of the details of what they say, is what am I missing, right? I'm, I gotta be missing something here because if I wasn't missing something, then I, there'd be no p purpose of us being here because I wouldn't need a teacher. I would know what you know and you know, we could just go out and have fun. So there's some things that this book says that I think helps to kind of, to kind of uh, throw light on, 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 ha on what, what's happening when that's happening. And so let me see if I can find one of those statements. Whoever knows their self knows their Lord. He also said, I knew my Lord through my Lord. What the prophet pointed out by that is that you are not you, but you are him, and there is no you. So what, what that's saying is that, and this is where I think the confusion occurs all the time, is that, the, is that who you, who we think we are that doesn't think we're the awareness, right? Who we think we are that doesn't think they're awareness, which is what the, what the, what the conditioning happened, you know, when you learned who you were and forgot who you uh, actually are, right? That, that that you who wants to experience the experience of being the awareness itself, that you is the awareness. The way I said it, who was I talking to? I think I was talking to you the other day at the end of the class. I said, all, all it is, your personality is, is God in drag. Right? Your personality is God in drag. So, so, so and, and the reason I think this can, can be useful is that maybe it can help you to relax the uh, the notion that there is a you that's not experiencing the truth of yourself that's trying to get there by realizing that that you is the self. That you is the self. There is nothing but, that's what non-duality means, you know. That, that you is the self. So it's not about changing anything as the self is seen, as the self is seen, it's seen that what it appeared not to be was it. Do you follow that? As the self is seen, it is seen that what it appeared not to be was it. Therefore, there was, it's no, there's never been anything but it. it it appearing as the person real, uh, uh, attempting to realize it as itself. It appearing as the person attempting to realize it as itself. And so if you get that, you know, the value of that, of getting that, is to simply stop buying, you know, stop buying what goes on when, when you hear these understandings and you hear these concept, concepts and then afterward you say yes but right because as soon as you say yes but right then you are shifting out of knowing the truth you're shifting out of knowing that even the personality that is saying yes but is the source is the self is the awareness now because of the fact that the, the brain and the mind has practiced for so long and, 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 ha and been in the habit of being separate from the self, right? And identifying itself as separate from the self. And there's a whole reality, a survival uh, reality that's associated with that, that's fear-based, right? right? That wants to keep playing, you know, that wants to keep playing. 
It wants to keep playing because when, when, the, when, the, self, uh, when the self allowed itself to, to forget itself into the identity and the personality and the body, it had to do it completely for it to work. Do you understand? Do you get that? It had to do it completely for it to work, right? Otherwise, you would be ill-equipped to be in the world. You'd end up in the nut house, right? So to be in this world, you have to really go along with the agreements, and you really have to believe that you are your body, you, you are your name, you are your social security number, and you're going to behave consistent with all that stuff to get along well in the world, right? It, uh, one way of talking about this, it's even been said that that until, and, and I, I see that there is, there is a kind of a truth in this, until you're, you're, you're a healthy uh, psychological person, until you have enough ego strength, right? Until you're a, 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 a successful in being a person in the world to some extent, right? That it's very difficult to to let that go. In other words, you have, to be, you have to be a strong enough person to let go of being a person. And this is one of the things, you know, when you look at these um, groups of people like yourself and like most of the people that go to these retreats, right? I don't think it's an accident that, there, that the profile of the people that go to these things is, is a pretty clear profile of people who are generally more educated, right, than other people, right? generally more successful than other people, right? That's, that's always the case, even here, you know, even here. You don't, you don't have people here uh, who are functioning in terms of their uh, um, effectiveness as a person, functioning at a very low level. They're not gonna show up here. You know, they're, they're, they're still dealing with what Maslow would call things on the lower level of, of what uh, of what there is to deal with in life in terms of seeing things in a more simplistic, concrete way. You know, uh, their, their survival-based operation is really survival-based in terms of shelter, food, like that, right? So you really have to mature a bit and, and develop and evolve, you know, and it's not necessarily a function of where, where you came from socioeconomically. You know, generally speaking, you may say that that's the case, but I, I, I am an, uh, a, a, a exception to that rule, and I know a lot of people that are exceptions to that rule. You know, people that grew up in very difficult socioeconomic backgrounds and nonetheless were able to mature as a human being and as a person and get to a place where they were sophisticated enough to really get to, to, uh, to be able to relate to the stuff that we're talking about here. So these are all aspects of the thing, of the, of the picture that complicates, that, that can complicate, doesn't necessarily have to complicate the situation, right? But the thing that I want to get across here is, you know, when, when we talk here and people ask questions here, it really is a matter of if I interact with the question, this is the dilemma. If I interact with the question to help the person realize the truth, right, right, I am unwittingly, uh, I, I, I am, well, not necessarily unwittingly, but, 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 but I am going into, I'm accepting that you are a person that I'm talking to that's trying to realize the truth, do you understand? And so I'm gonna interact with you that way, right? Well, am I helping you or hurting you? You see, because I, I'm, 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 I'm relating to you as if who you're being in asking the question is real, when it's not real. So it's a dilemma, you know? And that's why for some people, I think Paul Hederman's one of them, he's, he's getting a little looser with it now. Um, won't answer a lot of questions because they simply don't want to get sucked into how easily you can get sucked into. You see, because if I'm interacting with you from where you're coming from, right, then in a sense, I'm accepting that 
where you're coming from is real. Do you get that? And that's why, that's why I say sometimes to people like you, because you're so, she blows my mind. She, she, she is like so a hair, she's like a hair away from the realization, right? And that's the way it really is, you know, because the, the, all you have to do, all you have to do is, is stop, stop identifying and connecting to the voice in your head that is speaking from the programming of survival, speaking from the, the brain and the programming of conditioning, right? As long as you come from there, there's nothing, I, there's nothing anybody can say to you that's gonna, that's gonna make any difference, you understand? Because, you, because when you're coming from there, you want, you want that, you wanna bring that to the, you know, you wanna be that as the awareness. You know, you wanna, that, that personality, that who you think you are, right, uh, wants to come along, wants to, that, that, that has to get, that has to somehow, it's almost like that identity, that personality is saying, uh, okay, if you say I am awareness, if you say I'm God, if you say I'm consciousness itself, okay, then, then help me uh, see how I can be that. Do you see how that's like the way it's going, right? Well, but that's not possible. So if I interact with you at all about it, I'm accepting the idea that that's possible, but that's not possible. So, you know, I was working with uh, uh, one of my clients that I do kind of guidance with the other day, and I was, I'll tell you, I was almost in tears with this guy because he was in tears. And he has been uh, dealing with this stuff for a long, long time, like a lot of people, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, right? And uh, he, he was tearing up because he was saying, you know, I know, I, 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 I don't doubt that this is real. I don't doubt the truth is true. And, and, I, and I want that so badly, and I see the relevance of it, and I see the difference it's gonna make, and I see how important it is, especially as I get older, that I'm, I, I, I'll, I, I, at this point, at this point, I'd, I'd probably give up everything. I'd probably give up my career. I'd probably be give up my wife. I'd probably be give up my money. I'd probably give up everything, you know. And he's and he's tearing up. And I and I, I and I was moved. I was moved by his sincerity and his commitment, right? But I was also moved by uh, the kind of f frustration that I got he was experiencing when in reality it, it, was, uh, it was much to do about nothing. Do you understand? It was much to do about nothing. Because the more, the more that which he thinks he is uh, 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 expresses the frustration and the suffering of not being able to experience the truth, Right? The, the more who he thinks he is expresses that suffering and that confusion and has more and more questions, right? It, it, it's generating itself by that. At, at, that. at that very moment that that's happening, that is the personality generating itself by that. And so the only, you know, I sat there with him for a while and, and at some point I just looked at him and I said, just stop. Just stop. That's what I think Paul Hederman means when he says, uh, if there's a pause in the pause where there is no interaction and there is no questions and answers, in the pause, in the silence, in the stillness, right? Like be still and know that I am God, right? It's in the pause. It can never be in the dialogue. It can never be in the concept of the understandings. It, 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 it's only in the silence. And the silence, by the way, is always available, right? The silence is always available, even if there's noise, 
The silence is always available even if there's noise, right? Because where, how could there be noise if there wasn't the silence for it to happen in? Do you understand? How could there be a personality if there wasn't a self for that to be occurring in, you see? I've sat with people in my psychotherapy office that were going through all kinds of craziness. I mean, really pathetic drama, right? And, and I'm sitting there looking at this and there's nothing, there's not, that there is, there's, there's no reason for it. There's nothing happening. It's all, it's all a function of this uh, uh, illusion, this dramatic illusion that keeps getting generated that seems so real and so scary you know, when in fact there's nothing happening. There's really nothing happening. And I don't mean that to demean that stuff either, you know. I know for people who are living in, the, for people who are in a bad dream, right, like when you're in a bad dream when you're sleeping, that's a real, that's a reality. That's, that's not just a bad dream. It's only after you wake up that you realize it was just a bad dream and nothing ever happened, right? So, Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention is this miracle business. Don't, like, break your brain about it, you know? I, I, uh, I suggested it to you as, uh, as an, a, an experiment that you could work with, right? That, and the reason I did it is because if you do work with it and if you do go through the steps that I suggested, it, it gives you something to work with that can bring about an outcome that can allow you to see the truth right and and it's not and the thing about it is is that it is it is guaranteed to work if you do it the way it needs to be done right and so what I mean to say by that is and that's why I said experiment with it if you go through the steps and you don't get to a place where you are seeing things differently through it through that through, through a context of unconditional love right then you need to go back and rework and see you know, what you thought you did that you really didn't uh, uh, do when you were doing the process. But don't make it a heavy, if you turn it into this heavy duty thing that you start judging yourself and all about, then you just, you're better off, don't do it at all. <laughs> don't do it at all, just take a walk.